Everybody can do amazing things with the right motivation and under the right setting. They can continue to add things to their plate and keep seeing high levels of success. And we wonder, how are they able to do that? So I want you each to think about a time that you were taking on maybe more than you thought you should have. You were juggling things like maybe a family, um, professional career, work, a personal life. And then you decided to do something like go into a doc program. <laughs> and you think that you're finding success in each of these areas. And so with the things that you're thinking about right now, these would be considered changes. And so I want to talk a little bit about change and how that affects um, the ability to be successful through the change. Bittner did a study, and he talked about change, and he talked about eight considerations for a change to be successful. And so while I want you to think about the thing that you're um, thinking through with your change, I'm going to think about this. I'm going to think through when we brought home our newborn, our very first child. And so these eight considerations, they go something like this. First is that you have to be accepting of the fear of change. I remember talking with my principal, and he said, uh, you have no idea. And I said, about what? And he says, you don't even know what you have no idea about before we brought our first child home. That kind of frightened me a little bit. The second one is you have to have training in basics. I had no idea how to do a onesie. I'm really adept at it now, but my 10-year-old hates it. <laughs> Third is you need to have a personal connection. Well, I think I'm personally connected with my children, so I really want this to work out. The fourth one is you need to have a teaching and a learning model. So I need somebody to show me the ropes, show me how to do these things that I have no skill in doing so that I can get better, and then have a learning environment for me so I don't feel punished if I'm not doing the right thing, but I feel like uh, people are helping me nurture and grow as I go through this change. Next is the climate. I need to be in a climate that is allowing um, this change to take place. My home's a very loving home. My wife didn't punish me too much, so I felt like it was a good setting for me to practice these skills. Seventh is motivation, and again, with my own child in my home, I'm very motivated to be, um, to be the father that I want to be, to be successful, and so I really wanted this change to work out. And the last one is support. I remember the feeling when we pulled into the driveway and there were no nurses, there was no on-call button, and there were no chicken strips. It was just me <laughs> and my wife and a baby, and I remember thinking, no one really told me how to do this. So I needed that support team around me. Um, we had my mom and her mom. We had relatives and family and friends help us out. So that support piece is critical. So you might be thinking, you know this stuff. We've talked about change before. So I want everybody to take out their cell phones. And I want you to look at your cell phone, and I want you to familiarize yourself with your cell phone because I'm, I'm going to be your boss here for a little bit, and I'm going to give you a directive. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to say that tomorrow when you walk into the classroom, you're going to be given the opposite cell phone. So if you have an Apple phone, you're going to have an Android, and if you have an Android, you're going to have an Apple. And I have a simple task for you. What I want you to do is use that cell phone effectively in that classroom to help students get better. Now, some of you might be thinking, you'd rather take on another doc program. But I, don't, I haven't really told you how to do this. I've just given you the tool and the expectation and said, this needs to happen. I've taken out some of the variables of that change because you've got the tools, you've got the technology, you've got my support, the world is your oyster, but how are you actually going to do these things? Well, Mrs. Smith used an amazing technology. See, Mrs. Smith, she used apples, but she used a different type of apple. Mrs. Smith used apples in her classroom every day. And so when we went to second grade, we knew that our notebooks had pictures of apples on them. We had pens and pencils that were shaped like apples. There were apple posters everywhere, and she really integrated apples into what we were doing to help the learning come alive for us. You see, Mrs. Smith lived on an apple orchard, and so she brought that experience with her to help us achieve in the classroom. She was very personally connected with the technology that she was using in the classroom setting. And so all these years later, I have very vivid memories of what we learned in second grade because of Mrs. Smith and the apples that she brought into that classroom. We, we may have also learned because she did say that there was a T-Rex living on her apple orchard that would come eat us if we misbehaved. Probably couldn't do that now. So this was done 14 years ago. Bittner's study talking about these eight considerations, it's 14 years old, and yet we're not seeing the success that we should see with integrating technology in the classroom setting. Right now, 61% of students say that they use technology to prepare written materials. 66% say they use it to do online searches. Yet only 13% of students are actually designing or producing something, and 9% are contributing to web-based content, blogs, or wiki spaces. So we need to do better than what we're doing. 
And so leaders, we need to realize that it's about supporting the individual, supporting that teacher, and helping them foster that personal connection between the tool that they're using and the thing that we want them to do in order for student achievement to really take root in a classroom and go where it needs to go. Thank you.